Hello everyone. We've just completed making uh, variables, learning about data types, learning about how to wrap an edge, uh, as well as if else if statements. Uh, now we're going to implement some of our strategies we've already learned and complete our first game, our first program. And so um, what we need to do is create a way to win the game. So I'm going to reorganize my characters a little bit save the world that's gonna cause some problems I'm gonna go and see, I I normally just follow along with what Greenfoot does and I I just was showing giving you guys an example so if you change your B to enemy enemy I like the gold copy and paste so copy paste enemy one enemy one enemy two enemy two uh, that cannot find enemy three. Now we should have less of a problem. Let's see, is it still looking for an enemy three? That could be possible. Okay, so it's looking for an enemy three. We'll give it an enemy three. Enemy three. Alright, so now you see the player got relocated um, to the location. I think this is going to want to be enemy 2 at some point, so we might as well just change that now. Um, now, let's take off the B ability for the you to be able to move the bees, the enemies. We are just going to simply have them run across the screen, and it's going to be a little bit of a dodging. So I can comment out that command and this will have no it won't do anything if the left or the right key is down because there is no code in there anymore you can just do two forward slashes and it will not have anything it'll just comment out and it won't do anything so now I go back and forth but nothing happens if I run into them. So, um, and let's make it a little bit more challenging. Ooh, this is gonna be nice and tough. Uh, we're gonna need to make it move closer, a little bit closer. You don't wanna have any gap. Want it spread out as well as we almost possibly can. All right, save the world. Now we're cooking. All right, now we're trying to find find our lane. Find our lane. Oh no! All right, sorry, that was just me messing around. Um, but we have our world. We have a lot of, of objects in there, and we can take out as we need and, and make it as uh, the right difficulty level. But we want to say uh, hit enemy. We're gonna create a method that if we hit enemy, um, we lose the game. So we're going to do a public void hit enemy. And the technical term for this void, I've explained it in previous videos, but the technical term for this void is a return type. Um, and that is because that is what is the computer is returning to you. Um, a parameter, oftentimes, uh, you see these open close parentheses, that's an empty parameter. We're not giving the computer anything. Sometimes you'll have an int parameter and it will ask for for speed or it'll ask for something of that nature or it will place that speed or uh, something else somewhere else so this is what we call a return type and we are returning nothing so void is nothing so that is what that return type is later on we'll explain what uh, we'll use our parameters for um, so if I show that is touching, so if you want to do control space, you can search for any method that's pre-recorded in there. It also adds any method that you create. So this hit enemy, you can use that later on. But we're gonna do one that they've pre-made. Is touching. If is touching enemy dot class. If you notice, real quick, I'm gonna show you control space is touching it's looking for a class so that's why you explain what class well enemy dot class enemy is the name of our class 
close parentheses, open curly bracket, enter, enter, close curly bracket. What do we want to have happen? Well, we want, if it's touching the enemy, if our player, which is where our, what class we're in, is touching the enemy, we are going to access our world information, which has our player, our enemies in there. So if we want to add or remove, we need to go into our world. So we are going to access, excuse me, go to put player. We're going to access our information from our world. So we're going to do get world, open close parentheses, because it's going to access information. Anytime you have a get, get x, get y, and the enemy, get x, get y, open close parentheses, because it's accessing information. You need to have a placeholder for it. So get world dot, uh, the dot is the location of the class that you're, you're going to, and what we're going to do with it is we're going to remove object command and what are we going to remove well we're going to remove this object now when we do get world dot remove object this it clearly knows that it's going to remove the player class that is touching the enemy class now this doesn't always work so easily when we go and do other uh, if we're having the player remove a bullet, it's not going to be as, as simple as that. So um, you need to make sure that this is this is just, and I'll specify it later on, but this is working for this game. We're going to remove object this, and you cannot have any code after you do a remove object this because you're, you've already removed the object, so Greenfoot will get very confused um, and will actually not run the code properly. Um, the only thing that you could possibly put after uh, get world remove object this is a green foot, green foot dot stop, and that green foot dot stop would stop the world. And I'm going to see if an error pops up when I do this. Uh, I did not put it. I did the most common mistake. Did not put hit enemy in the act method. Always can tell when I put my code in and it compiles and I am confused on why something is not working. I did not put it in the act method. It is not in the main method. Ah, oh, no error. Remove object, there's no error, and greenfoot.stop. But that is basically the only thing you can put after um, remove object this. Now, my greenfoot's messing up. Okay, now, If I want to add object, I do the same thing. Get world dot add object, but I need to add an instance. An instance. Remember what that instance was. We go in here. This is an instance. The difference between an instance and an actor is that this is one. This is one in particular actor. This is one of those objects. This is one instance of the B. These are the bees. These are the enemies. This is one and this is a single image of the enemy. So think of it as one as opposed to the entire group. Okay? So we go back to our player add object new you win. Now we have not made a you win, so this will come up as an error. So if we want to get the center, we're going to add this object and an error will pop up, but we're going to add a you win screen soon enough. New object, uh, and we want to add it to the middle. We want it to a new win screen pop up right in the middle of our program, right in the middle of our game. Uh, you want it to be halfway from the edge. So our width is 800, so I'm going to put 400 here. And our height is 600, so I'm going to put 300 here. That will add a new object of new you win right in the middle. There is an error because we don't have a you win. So I'm going to make a new subclass called you win. And I am going to Im import from file an image. Let's see if I have a you win here. Oh, I sure do. Excellent. So now I have a you win. If you want to download, see if you notice, import from file. Here are my pictures. You can download these pictures and find them and, and edit them and do whatever you need to do. But we got a UN screen. Now it compiles perfectly because we have a UN class. So if I, why would I do a UN? I should have put a U lose. But I'm going to win. Oh, there's an error. 
Why is there an error? Well, let's see what the error says. So Greenfoot does a great job, and most programs do, of creating a terminal window. And if I can access that window, that would be fantastic. Um, what this window says, if I was able to get it up, is that the error will say actor not in world or null pointer exception which means there is something is null that should be true so I go in and I add object this and I have that after I've already removed this from the world so if you see null pointer exception or actor not in world an attempt was made to do something for the actor so if I asked the actor to move here, well, he's already been removed from the world, so we would say actor not in world. In this case, it's trying to add an object or write, read code after the, the you remove object this, and it can't, doesn't work. The only thing that works is this greenfoot.stop because you're just stopping the world. This, you're adding an object to the world, um, and so that will not work. It needs to happen before. So I should have a you lose, but it's going to say you win. You win. Okay, we don't want that to be you win. We want that to be you lose. So let's set image. Uh, or actually, no, let's create a you lose. Okay, and all you got to do, you lose. And we're going to import from file. Uh, do I have a you lose? I do not. Uh, you get, we're going to do warm hugs. I'm uh, going to troll them. So, um, and our player, we're going to change it from you win to you lose. Why would you win if you were touching the enemy? So it's going to be you lose, and we're going to get warm hugs. Warm hugs. <laughs> All right, excellent. So now we need to create a way for our player to win the game. Um, so I'm going to do another public void. You win. Okay. And since I don't capitalize methods, see, I don't capitalize methods, it's easy to distinguish my methods and my classes because I do not capitalize methods. I do something called camel case, which means you lowercase the first word and then every additional word you capitalize. It makes it very easy to see where your methods are, where your classes are. Um, I know this is an instance of a class. I know this is a method. I know this is a variable, lowercase, not a class. I know method, method and I know player is up here as a class so it's very easy to tell the difference okay um you win uh, let's see so if we let's reach the bottom of the screen so we need to get the y value if that is greater than I know it's the bottom or equal to 599 if you remember greater I mean uh, in Greenfoot this is zero zero. This is the biggest x value and the biggest y value. So the y value needs to be its biggest right here. X value is zero here. Y value is still the biggest. Y value is zero up here. X value is its biggest because x axis and y axis. So we're going down to the bottom. So we're going to go from zero zero all the way down to the greatest y value. And now you can get this terminal window off if you got fixed. Now, if get y is greater than or equal to 599, you could also just put equal to equal equal to 599. Um, but this is a different operator. So one equal sign, if you notice, is setting speed equal to z one. Setting speed to the new speed. If we're asking for what speed is, if it's greater than or equal to, or if it's just equal to, you have to do two equal signs. Something a little bit that might be a little bit confusing, but that is called uh, the equal to operator. Okay. Um, get y equals equals 599 we're gonna do uh, get world just like this one but we're gonna I'm gonna copy it and guys go ahead and practice typing out this code practice pausing and looking at this code once and then trying to do it all on your own uh, you need to need to practice writing code um, it does help notice how fast I am now I've written code for the last four years teaching and, and been helping people and and writing it without looking at anything it makes it so much easier 
once you get into more uh, more complex writing uh, code writing uh, to have practice it on your own if you just copy and paste and just type exactly what I type and never try to do it on your own try to make your own program now that we've created so now are you in make sure copy paste and now we have finished completing the game and so what I was saying is that now that you have your game warm hugs okay we need to make it a little easier but now that we have our game you should think about writing your own game figuring out a way that you make a game on your own with the, the, the things that we have learned you could have them scroll up you could have them spin in circles you know how to make them turn you could have them do a lot of different things so I'm gonna get rid of a lot of these make the game a little bit easier to test out my you win make sure my numbers are right oh no I need to get some speed going huh Nah. I guess I will delete this delete this that should make it easy a nice window for me to go through all right so now but I don't want the game to keep going if I win because then what will happen is a all right I'm gonna get a ton of speed you win and then if I hit an enemy I lose so I want to stop the game and then an error pops up so I want to you win and then a green foot dot stop okay um, now what's the issue oh just wasn't filing for me. Okay, uh, now we have a fully functional game. Oh, I lose. Now it might not be the most complex game or the most challenging game, um, but it is still a game, guys. And it, it's important to start start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. So um, I win. It paused. Everything's great. Um, later on, we'll show you how to make this bigger. You can also edit the size of the image that you import, make it huge, or 800 by 600 pixels. That'll cover the whole screen. So now that you have a fully functional game, I challenge you to make a game on your own. Design, design something that's cool. Maybe have you know how to make more than one player. If you have different uh, WASD controls as well as arrow keys, you could have a two-player game. You know how to add objects and remove objects. Uh, you know how to see if something is touching something else you know how to use variables and data types if statements if else statements there's a ton of stuff you can do part of programming is using your creativity and your compa capacity to uh, design something on your own and think up problems and problem solve your own issues uh, is is part of the challenge and part of uh, what makes you a great programmer and a great game designer so now it's your turn um, until until next time, uh, this is Mr. Crow's programming course signing off. In the next episode, we will uh, begin working on our maze project, and you'll be able to get going on that. So uh, hopefully you take my advice and uh, create a game on your own in Greenfoot and try to challenge yourself. If you have any questions, you can always co leave comments, um, message me, try to get information from me directly. I'm happy to help. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also go on to Greenfoot and listen to, and watch some tutorials. I'm not ask. I'm trying to spread the word about programming and game design and uh, and whatever means necessary. So um, please, I appreciate any subscriptions uh, and all likes and comments. So uh, feel free to do that. Um, until next time, this is Mr. Crow's course officially signing off.